Over 75% of all people use Windows as their daily desktop driver. But why is that? Windows has become the industry norm for quite some time now. And it's the reason why we use it in school. I mean, what good would an employee be if they had no idea of the operating system that is being used in almost every single company? But since Windows is nowadays not only used in productive environments, it has shifted a lot more towards advertising and installing something for everyone. But is that really something that a company wants? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video, where we are going to talk about the problems of Windows in our current time and if companies really should evaluate if an open source operating system like Linux would come in handy for their employees. But before we start, let me remind you to give this video a like and while you're down there, also hit that subscribe button. If this is already your second time on this channel, then you're definitely interested. Alright, so Windows. Don't get me wrong, Windows was always meant to be an operating system which should be used by everyone. But let's be real, that's not how the world works. Windows is a closed proprietary operating system built by Microsoft to provide a secure, fast and easy to use experience for companies. And because of that, also for personal use as well. And yeah, I know what you're thinking right now. Windows was always good for personal use, right? Well, funny thing, it was, just not to the extent that we currently see with Windows 10 and 11. If we compare Windows 11 to Windows 7, then there are quite some differences on why I would consider one a more personal approach and one a heavily work-oriented one. Number one would of course be ads. Windows 7 basically had close to nothing, while Windows 11 tries to automatically install and show users apps, banners and similar. Well, speaking of it, Windows is nowadays so packed of pre-installed apps and deeply integrated dependencies which are mostly, you guessed it, set up for personal use. And companies usually deactivate a lot of these features simply because they are not productive. You see where I'm going with this? Yes, Windows was always good for personal use, but it has always been built with productivity in mind. Microsoft has come to realize that if companies use any form of Windows, then the end user is most likely to buy a Windows machine for themselves. And because of that, it became bloated. Like I said before, all of these features meant for personal use are just not suited in a productive environment. Windows Hello? Deactivated. Clipboard memory? Hmm, maybe not. Increasing control over Windows updates and installing software? Let the company handle that with a rollout tool. And with all of these measures in place, this new stripped down version of Windows seems to increasingly look like a Linux distribution. I mean, just look at it. Users installing updates and software from an application? This has been done on Linux with repos for ages now. Installing an operating system with custom drivers, integrations and more? This could be so much faster on Linux, since you don't need to simulate mouse and keyboard inputs for installing .exe applications. Most Linux distributions are also far more lightweight than Windows by default, which not only means less storage requirements and less crashes due to less processes, but also less user errors, because you forgot to deactivate a crucial user-friendly feature in Windows. Linux is objectively the way better choice for companies. Just download a distro of your choice, easily create a script or even an installer and you're good to go. But then, why does no one do it? Well, because of several reasons. The first thing that comes to mind if you've ever logged onto a device from a company or even your school is logging into a domain. The industry standard, which almost everyone uses, is Microsoft's Active Directory. And it's really handy. You can deploy one or several servers in different geographical locations where you can add users, groups, handle domain lookups and apply certain rules or so-called group policy objects. Integrating Linux into an Active Directory domain is possible and some distros already hint that while installing, but as you can imagine, setting policies meant for Windows machines has no or close to no use on Linux. What is great about the Active Directory is that policy changes or group assignments get applied dynamically, so you don't have to reinstall a PC or do it for every single machine separately. While there are certain approaches on how you could integrate Linux desktops into the AD, they do not offer even a close amount of its capabilities. 
However, Linux can counter a lot of these issues, because for once, it mostly affects the GPO part of the Active Directory, and two, it's mostly used to limit Windows and less extended. Since Linux does not come with a lot of features that would get blocked by GPOs, then you don't really need them. For installing programs or installing certificates, you can always use scripts, so we don't really lose much functionality here. But one of the biggest advantages that Linux has over Windows is the use of repos by default. As a company, if you want to use a software store for your employees, then you could just set up a repo real quick. You don't have to struggle with packaging .exe or .msi files. You just use what is already there. It's fast, requires less maintenance and you can even automate the updates. Pretty cool. Linux, in contrast to Windows, is also considered more secure. This is because for once, since it is open source, there are not only more eyes, which keep an eye out, pun intended, but single patches for applications also arrive sooner and you don't have to wait for the next big update. And with the login and permissions out of the way, what's stopping companies from switching over to Linux desktops? Well, there is one thing that I didn't talk about yet. And it's software compatibility. A lot of stuff just does not work. Most of all, ERP and Office software. And I know, I know, a lot of people would say, just use something else. But often, you can't. Their customers and partners use Microsoft Office. Converting files to different types still does not work 100% reliable and is not even possible at all in some cases. And if you are difficult to work with, then they will just go and find someone else. You need to stay reliable. And that's why so many use Windows and Office. You not only get the industry standard, but also the objectively best email program on the market. Pair that with Microsoft's Defender, cloud services and more, then you have an offer on the table that is really hard to beat. Sure, you can build something similar on Linux, but it takes a lot of effort and time, which not everyone is willing to spend. If they do, then the superiority of a customizable operating system like Linux, which can be shaped into the perfect tool for their needs, will outshine Microsoft by far. The question is always, what does it cost? And don't forget that you need to teach your employees as well. Up until that happens, I don't see Linux becoming mainstream anytime soon. But when the change happens, and at some point in the future it definitely will, then we will truly see the year of the Linux desktop. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and heck, even subscribe to the channel. You won't regret it. Oh, and before you go, you should also check out this video right here. It's recommended, so it can't be that bad, right? And all that's left to say now is... Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.